government. We've been looking for everybody to save us. You are the heroes of today. We got to start thinking about what we're going to do with our money, people. Every tribe of mankind is in your communities getting rich. And you don't even realize it. If we want equality, if we want to be standing strong, it starts with our money. The politicians want us divided because you know what? Republicans and Democrats make money off of us that way. The country wants us divided by us being racially divided. Why? Because there's big money in that. But I will say what Dr. King once said. We may have come here on different ships, but right now we're all in the same boat. And until we realize we need to start paddling, we will all go down. So I challenge you all today, not just to wish, but to plan to make tomorrow better. God bless you. I love you with the love of Jesus. Reclaim the dream. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin and the sun fester like a sore and then run? Or does it stink like rotten meat, crushed in sugar over like a syrupy sweeter? Maybe it sags like a heavy load or does it just explode? Those words, of course, come from Langston Hughes, a colleague of Paul Lawrence Dunbar during the Harlem Renaissance. What happens to a dream deferred? Ask those for whom the American dream remains an elusive nightmare. What happens to a dream deferred? Ask 40 million who still find themselves beneath the poverty level. What happens to a dream deferred? I guess my man Grandmaster Flash can give it to you like this. It's like a jungle. Sometimes it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. <laughs> it's like a jungle. Sometimes it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Ask those who find themselves in schools that are factories of failure that feed the prison pipeline so that we now have in this country, what Michelle Alexander calls the new Jim Crow. What happens to a dream deferred? We are here to reclaim that dream. Why? Because we dare to believe with Dr. King from 47 years ago who against the backdrop of a negative nightmare of Jim Crow apartheid dare to declare we have a dream. So yes, we're reclaiming the dream. Why? Because dreams still come true. They come true because 1963 led to the passage of civil rights legislation in 1964. Dreams do come true because marching feet from Selma to Montgomery led to the passage of voting rights legislation. Dreams do come true because Rosa Parks sat, Jesse ran, Al Sharpton stood, Obama won, and now we can all fly. Dreams do come true because now in the White House we have Malia and Sasha playing in that White House because dreams do come true because if God be for us who can be against us dreams do come true because no weapon formed against us shall prosper dreams do come true and we shall overcome peace yo Madison good afternoon everybody welcome to the historic Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School where I'm a proud graduate went here for three years, graduated from Dunbar, they gave me the launching pad to be able to go forward and help people in this city. You know, as we talk about education, let's reflect back on 47 years ago when Dr. King not only talked about the then existing conditions among African Americans in this country, he painted the greatest vision ever to move us forward. And 47 years later, we still have the challenge and the charge before us to right the wrongs that are befallen people who are minorities in this nation. We know we need to improve public education so that our kids graduate and have a, the ability to, to get a job in this society. We need to improve employment. In this city, when you go to the eastern end of this city, Ward 8, 35% unemployment. Ward 7, 19% unemployment. And it's time for us to be outraged and get our people back to work again. Everybody deserves to work. And also, the District of Columbia deserves to be treated with equality. We pay the same federal taxes as everybody else in this nation. Last year we paid $3.6 billion in taxes. And we can't even get a vote in the Congress for one of the most outstanding representatives in this nation, Eleanor Holmes Norton. And so, instead of just fighting for a vote, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to stand up 
and fight to become the 51st state in the nation. Yeah. It is time for us to be outraged. Those of us who live in the District of Columbia, let's demonstrate our outrage. And those of you who live outside the city, go back home wherever it is and say it is time to right the wrongs in the nation's capital. That we can't fight for democracy in foreign places and not fight for it at home. Ladies and gentlemen, let's right the wrongs. Let's make Dr. Dream, Dr. King's dream come true. Let's have equality in our nation's capital. Thank you all very much. And pastor of Grace Baptist Church, Mount Vernon, New York. Good afternoon. I want you to know that we are really grateful to have you here. It's important that we are here 50 years, not, not far from here, 50 years ago, a great American articulated the hopes and dreams of his generation. And we're here because we have picked up that generation. We have picked up their hopes and their dreams. We believe that we want the souls, we are testifying to the souls of those who fought before us. We testify that we will never forget their sacrifices. We will never forget their being bruised and brutal and dignified for our hopes and dreams. We will never forget them. But we're also here to celebrate the accomplishments of the last 50 years. We have watched many doors open, new opportunities have arisen for us as a people. We have a lot to be proud of. But we are also here because the work is incomplete. There's still yet much that we must do. Some have asked, why are we here and the other group is at the mall? This is America. All groups ought to have the opportunity to speak and to give their particular point of view. I happen not to agree with their point of view, but I would fight for their right to speak at the mall. But let me tell you, we've been at the mall for the last hundred years. We've been at the mall. It's all right with me that they're at the mall today because we are at the White House. And as long as at, as long as they are at the mall, it's all right with me if they let us be in the White House. The challenge before us is to make sure that we are a competent people, that we bring to the table great competence, great commitment, excellence. Martin King said this, Ralph Waldo Emerson said in 1871, if you can build a better mouse trap than your neighbor, even if you build your house in the woods, the world will make a bitten path to your door. And this becomes increasingly true we must not set out to be a great Negro doctor, a great Negro barber, or a great Negro beautician, for if we do, we've already flunked the matriculation examination into the University of Integration. If it falls your lot to sweet streets, go on out and sweet streets. Sweet streets like Michelangelo carved marble. Sweet streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweet streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweet streets so well that the whole host of heaven and earth will pause and say, here live a great street sweeper who Get this job well. Get together, children. Don't you be weary. There's a great camp meeting on the other okay, side. Yeah. 